So it's my, my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today, and it's Carrie Guther. And so Carrie's going to come on up. We have been so blessed as a church over these last five months with amazing guest speakers that God has given to us. And not once have we had to beg and plead with people to preach. Uh, and that's just fantastic. And so God has really been in our midst during this transition. And uh, we are eager, of course, for the future and for Jeff joining us. But we are not forgetting that God can still work in our midst through this time, through these five months. And so Carrie is joining us today from Cedarview Alliance. And she's been there for the last six years. And she does their kind of elementary ministries from grades one to five and their finance. And she's been a guest speaker kind of in and around the city. Is good friends with one of our board members, uh, Tracy Jackson. And uh, when we asked her to come and speak, it was almost an immediate yes. And we just had to find an excellent time for her to do it. So Carrie, thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be here with you today. Um, I gotta admit, the lights are really bright. My eyes aren't that great. Some of you are way far away. But I hope you're comfortable and I hope you can hear and that's all that counts. I am glad to be here today. It is good to be in your midst and um, exciting things are happening for you. Uh, I think your pastor is moving in today, somebody told me, and things are on the move and that is so wonderful. And it's just, the worship was wonderful. So thank you to the worship team. Uh, you guys have a great ministry team here. Uh, Annika in your front office is so patient with me this week as my week went completely awry and she just kept sending me little emails. Are you sending that now? Are you sending it now? And I had totally, totally had the intention of sending it first thing Thursday morning and then the day went sideways and she patiently waited for me to squeak it in the door just before her four o'clock hour. So I'm so thankful for uh, your ministry team and I hope that you bless them because they are giving of themselves all the time. Well today, uh, well there's a picture of us. Maybe I'll introduce my family to you. In the center, t oh, well sort of center, towards the right is my husband Dan. He's also on staff at Cedarview. Uh, he was uh, hired a, a year ago, January, as the student ministries pastor, and he just transitioned into associate pastor. So things are on the move in our world, and uh, my son Ben and my daughter Jenna. And we're spread all over the place. My husband is preaching at Pathway, which is a, a church plant over in Canada this morning, and my kids insisted on going to Cedarview, so we're just all over. So we're, we're just glad. To, um, that there are so many opportunities for us to worship the Lord with so many folks all around this wonderful capital region. Well, the, while I was uh, praying and asking God what it is that I was supposed to talk to you about this morning and share with you, and I'm really seeking what, Lord, I know all the things that are on my heart and that, are, that he's dealing with me, but what do I need to pick to share with all of those uh, that are going to attend here this morning? And uh, we landed on uh, this uh, topic simply because I think you folks are in transition here in this church, but also I find that lives are in transition a lot. There's a lot of things happening, changes happening all around. So I wanted to tell you a bit about my story over the last six weeks. Maybe you can relate to some of that story, and it intricately involves God in our story. So my life for the past six weeks, as I said, has been absolutely full of excitement. I'm going to change, see if this, oh, there we go. Um, there seems to be uh, the year of celebrations for us, and they all came in a compact six-week time frame. It all began back in June the 9th when my husband and I decided to take our first away vacation. That's like getting on a plane, packing your suitcase, going, getting out the passport. Uh, first time we've done that without our kids or not coming home specifically to see family or visit friends. Just away vacation to a brand new spot. Uh, first time we've done that to celebrate our 25th anniversary. I know, I don't look old enough, right? That's okay. I married when I was 12. It's all good. No. We, uh, so off we went, and we went to Las Vegas, of all places, and uh, no, not to do all those things. It actually is a very family-friendly place to be, lots to do. It was lots of fun, and it was lots of sun. And by the time June rolled around, oh, we just needed some warmth and some sun after the year that we've had. Both of us, I think, well, we are summer babies, and so we just crave the sun. And so the 104 degrees 
was lovely. We loved it. And so off we went and we had a good time. But the five days went by really, really fast and we quickly landed home. And uh, just the next week, friends of ours arrived and they came for a 12-day visit. Now, I have to tell you that this wasn't a normal visit. We were in on a little bit of a secret. They were coming to Ottawa to elope. And that's what happened on a Tuesday. You know that really rainy Tuesday in the middle of all those gorgeous days? That was the day that they had picked. And it was supposed to be a lovely garden wedding in my mom's backyard. My mom's here today with me. She lives across the street from where we live. And it was just all this quick plan. And I was doing all the stuff here at home, buying all the clothes for everybody, and including the groom, including the, my husband and the other pastor that was helping us. And we had this whole thing planned. And uh, that happened in our living room instead on the Tuesday, and it was great. And it was my children, myself, as I said, our other pastor friend and the photographer, and the bride and groom. And I'll, ha I'll tell you a bit, a bit more about that a little later. Well, um, two days after that, my son graduated from St. Mark High School. So I know, again, a mother of an 18-year-old. I just don't know how that happens, but it's true. And then he celebrated his birthday the day after Canada Day, his 18th birthday. Throw in a couple, a large family gathering, couple more birthdays, some changes at work that I've already told you about, and there you have it in a nutshell, my life since June until now. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself stopping in the middle of all of the busy, whether it's good busy or bad busy, and going, how am I going to get through all this? You look at your calendar and there's so many things plugged in there and you're thinking, how am I going to do that exactly? All these events are good in their own right. They were joyous times. Every single thing we celebrated were joyous times in their own right. But behind all of them, there were other things. Some of them had circumstances that were jam-packed into those celebrations. And some came up with huge questions like, how did we get here? What do I do now? What will tomorrow hold? And so today's Bible passage has somebody asking a huge question just like this. In Psalm 21, the psalmist asks the question, and he actually answers it for himself. And so we're going to look at that today. And maybe we can read it together. Can you folks see that okay? Maybe we'll just read it aloud together. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. The Lord will lift my, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? The psalmist asks this question. Where does my help come from? A weighty question asked from a seeking soul. Well, there's a debate here over who wrote this psalm. Some think it's David, because he wrote a lot of psalms, and some think it's just some other songwriter, because they contribute a lot to the psalms, too. And it's not really known where it was written or what they were looking at. What hills, what mountains were they looking at? Were they looking up to the mountains that are the hills that people met to worship on, the Israelites met to worship God on? Were they looking towards Jerusalem because it was built up on a hill and they were in the plains of Babylon? That's not really known either. But you know, for us to gather something from this psalm, it doesn't really matter that we know that information. All we know is that somebody post posed a question where does my help come from? And this writer of this psalm is looking up. They're looking for help. They're looking for hope. So where does my help come from? And they answer it right away. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Now, life isn't always full of celebrations like mine has been recently. Perhaps there's times where you're so busy that you just meet yourself coming. You ever been like that? You're thinking, seriously? I always get up in the morning, I'm like, I'm blow drying my hair again? Didn't I just do that? Or maybe there's strains in your relationships. Things are broken. 
Promises are unkept. Times of loss when jobs disappear, the money stops flowing, and loved ones leave this earthly home. There are times that you might find yourself looking up saying, where does my help come from? Well, I'm here today to let you know that these moments that we find ourselves, and I have to admit, I had quite a few this week, that these moments are where God is saying it's not hopeless. The psalmist that wrote this short little psalm, he knew that there was hope and there was someone on whom we could hold. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, God's the creator of all things. He's infinite universe right down to the minute cell. And there's another psalm that says, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in times of trouble. So when you find yourself in the midst of things that are pressing in on you and you don't know what to do, don't get caught up looking at all the mess. Because that's what I tend to do. I tend to just be looking around at it all going, how did I get here? How do I get out of here? What am I supposed to do now? 25 years ago, Dan and I chose a life verse for our marriage, and it comes from Hebrews 12, 2. And it says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Now, there's a whole lot more in that verse, but that's the part that we really cling on to. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. When things get into a mess, fix your eyes upon him. And he knows where you are. He knows all the things that are happening around you. And he knows the way out. The same is in this psalm. The writer realizes that his help comes from God. Not the hills, not man, not powerful princes or kings or nations, but from God alone. So where does your help come from? when you find yourself in the middle of all the mess, with tons of decisions to make, or too much stress to manage, where, when things are pressing in on all sides, where does your help come from? God, for God is here. Where does Dan's and my help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Okay, that's great. But how do we know? How do we know that God can help us? How do we know that that's true? Well, verses 3 to 6 in this psalm give us a little glimpse of who God is and all that he is able to do. It says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will not slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day or the moon by night. I bet you that the people that are living in the chaos in the Gaza Strip and in Israel, I bet you those that know the scripture are holding on to that, that God will not slumber. He has not left them. He will be with them. Now, how many of us, when asked the question, oh, how are you? Usually, what do we say? fine. We're fine. Sometimes I say, I'm tired. Anybody else with me on that? I'm tired. And I found that lately, this is my answer to a lot of things. How are you? Oh, I'm tired. Instead of saying, I'm busy, (laughs) because that could be my answer too, right? Well, the past few weeks, as I said, have made me tired. There's a lot to manage. Now, I did one of those personality uh, things, you know, where you figure out your personality. And I was told that I, I really don't like things encroaching on my social calendar. If I put it there, it's fine. If other people put something on my calendar, it just adds extra stress. So lots of things written on my calendar tend to suppress me rather than free me up. And maybe you're the same. Well, the good news is that even though I'm tired, My Heavenly Father never gets tired. He never slumbers or sleeps. He is always on watch. He doesn't even need to take a little nap, nor does he ever get caught daydreaming. He is always watching over those that he loves. As one author put it, he never sleeps. His power is unwearied. It needs no recuperation, and his watchfulness is never at fault. 
And because of this, he will not let your foot slip. Now, I'm not a climber. I have no sense of risk. This scares me. But for those of you who love to climb mountains and step out onto ledges, hopefully you understand how safe those ledges are. I'm not sure that, yeah, well, anyway, God will look after you, but we have to have common sense too, right? But in reality, in life, God will not let your foot slip. It may seem like it. It may seem like I am over the other side and I'm on my way down that hill because I am losing it. But God is with us always. When you put your trust in God and ask Jesus to forgive your sins, the Holy Spirit is given to you as a seal that you are God's child. You have become part of his forever family. I love that. We have some families in our church that our our lead pastor included who have just adopted kids, and they are in forever families. I love that phrase, and I love that phrase when it comes to the kingdom of God too. When you have Christ in your heart, you are in God's forever family. Your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, which it says in the book of Revelation. You stand on the foundation of Jesus Christ. He is called the rock. Those who are part of his family have their feet firmly planted with him, both now and through eternity. And God will not let you slip. He has wonderful keeping power. I love how it says in here too about God's right hand. Now, back in the day, when it, talking about being by your right hand, your right hand was your working hand. So God is with you. It says here in the psalm that God is with you. He will give you the strength to do all the things you need to do. But then it talks about his hand will shade you. Now, it's summer, hot days, beating sun. Have you found yourself lately needing some shade? Just like this guy up here? Just, and that's kind of the picture that the psalmist is trying to paint that God will shade you, will guard you, will keep you from the heat of life. Now, as I said earlier, my son graduated from high school. I have to tell you, I really can't believe that we're here already. I sat in, this was at the Met, that's where their their ceremony was, was held, and I sat there and I was having this conversation with the Lord, saying, there's all these things that I was planning on doing. There's all these things I was planning on teaching him and planning on saying, and I can't believe we're here already. How did that happen? In this still small voice, and then the voice also of my friends who I had confided in and my parents who I was talking this through, they said, you know what? God's not done with him yet. There's still time. It's okay. But maybe some of you, I see Rachel here. Rachel, you also graduated, right? Good job. And maybe there's some other folks that did the same. Now, I know that Rachel knows already what she's going to do. She's just got this plan, and she's just heading on out, and that's great. But maybe there are some that haven't quite figured out what it is that they want to do or where they need to go. My son's one of those guys. He is not sure what he is supposed to do in life. And that's a really scary, confusing place for a young guy to be. And as his mom's standing there beside him while he's like, I don't want it to say undecided across because they post up on the board when they're walking across the stage what they're going to do and, you know, nano engineering, microphysicist, undecided. <laughs> He's just like, I don't really want it to say that. I said, well, then don't say that. Say that you're taking a, weird, a year to gain experience and further understanding and you'll step back into uh, school later. So that's what he put up there instead. But it's a scary place for for young people to be. Now, I can, uh, uh, well, confess to you folks, for those of you that don't know me well, that I like to have, I can can kind of control things a little. And I like to have things in order and know what's coming. And I could just jump right in and take over and tell him what he's supposed to do and what he's supposed to be. But the Lord told me a long time ago, he taught me a lesson actually when he was little, little, little. I was sitting on the couch and he was two, two months old and I'm holding him and I'm crying, which is, you know, the other thing I do a lot. So I'm holding him and I'm crying and in walks a friend uh, to come and visit. And she's like, oh my goodness, what happened? What is, what is going on? I'm looking at him and I'm saying, I don't know how to raise a 13 year old. And she's just kind of like, oh dear, postpartum, yikes. 
Um, no, but what she, and then she said, you know what, you don't have to know how to raise a 13-year-old because he's only two months and you and the Lord are going to grow in it together. Well, now he's 18 and I'm still saying, I don't know how to raise an 18-year-old, but God knows all about it. And we keep telling Ben, don't worry, God knows. God is watching over you. He is seeing what you are doing. He knows the future he plan has planned ahead for you. And God is able to relieve you from the heat and the pressure that you feel of life. Just trust him. Lift your eyes to him and he will answer your prayer. Do you have things that are bearing down on you in life? Do you have things that are really causing heat and stress in you? God is able to look after those things. We have to just fix our eyes on him. Where does Ben's help come from? The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, about this wedding. Our friends who were married in our living room did not arrive at this point very easily. In fact, it had been quite a difficult journey for my friend Krista. And don't worry, talk to her. She told me I, was, I had freedom to share the story with you. It was about two years ago when I received a frantic phone call where she told me between her sobs how her husband of 10 years had suddenly walked out on her for someone else. We were all devastated. This was a couple who were the guardians of our children. We were very close and had adopted them into our family, calling them aunt and uncle. But Krista had a very strong faith, and her foot did not slip. In fact, she held so tight to God through those next months, and actually that stretched into years. God did not keep something horrible from happening to her, but he did keep her through it. And when the psalmist says that the Lord will keep you from harm, he doesn't mean bad things, because we know bad things happen all the time to us, to our loved ones, and to those around us. Our world is broken. There is sadness, there is illness, and there is strife. But God is able to keep us from falling. He is strong and faithful, and he will do it. He will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The journey through the loss of her marriage and the ultimate divorce was very painful. There were really hard days of really deep sorrow and lots of phone calls and lots of emails and lots of self-doubt. But God had a plan. He watched over her coming and her going, and he brought someone into her life with a newfound love. And that's what led to that intimate wedding ceremony on that very, very rainy Tuesday. God was in the midst of it. We all wept. My husband started the ceremony with, friends were gathered here to, and that was it. He was crying, we were crying, it was just a mess. But. It was the sweet ending and a wonderful beginning, demonstrating the faithfulness of God and how much he loves each one of us. Do you find yourself in a relationship that's broken? Are you suffering today from loss of a job, a child, a spouse, a dream? God is faithful. Where did Christus help come from? The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So where are you today? Are you caught in the midst of life and finding it all closing in? Are you standing on the edge of change and wondering where it's all going to lead you? Or are you looking for help? For hope? Well, I'm standing here with the psalmist today to say, God is here. Call out to him. He will answer you. He is able. He is powerful enough. He's all-knowing. He's everywhere. He never changes. There's nothing that can separate you or me from his love. God is faithful. He knows all about you. He knows right where you're at, where you've been, and he also knows where he plans for you to go. He is the author of your story. Allow him to write it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. Lord, we are thankful for all the blessings, the material things that you give us. But God, we are so thankful for you. Ultimately, for who you are. You are so great. And we just try to box you into something that our finite minds can understand. But you are far greater than that. And Lord, you know life. You know how it is. Right here, 
right here in Riverside South in 2014. Today, you know how it is. You know how our lives are. You know the things that are marked on our calendars for tomorrow and in the weeks to come. Lord, you know the things that have happened in this past week alone that maybe have knocked us sideways, have stopped us short, or Lord, have called us, caused us to celebrate. You know all about it. And so today, Father, I pray by your Holy Spirit, you would remind us that when we are in the midst of all of it, that we would not forget about you that we would not try to manage things on our own, that we would not try to control or work or do all those things, Lord, just to make things better or right, but that we would look up to the hills, past the hills, onto you. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from you. God, you are so great and so awesome. And we look to you, Lord. Your timing is also perfect. And some have been looking to you for a very long time for very specific things. And so, God, we ask today that you would answer those prayers and the cries from the heart. Lord, that you would ultimately bring about your great, great answers in those situations. We thank you, Father, that you are a God that never changes. You are faithful in the past and you will be faithful again. And that we hold on to. And as the psalmist, we say, where does our help come from? Our help comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you very much, Carrie. There we go. <laughs> so you guys know the drill. We don't spare our guest speakers the hard questions either. So does anybody this morning have a question for Carrie? Hi, Carrie. Hi. Um, I know that you went through this already, the verse 7. I just want to go through that one more time on how to interpret that God will keep you from all harm. You went through it, but can you hit that again? Yes. Here, as I said, it doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you. It is actually soul harm. It's not necessarily physical harm. Lots of people would like to hold on to, oh, I'm just going to claim that nothing is going, no sickness, no injury, no, and we know that that our world is a broken, sinful place. It is degenerating all the time, right? It is actually talking about soul harm, where God will protect you, will keep you. He will, spiritually, you are with him always. He will not let you slip or fall. Any other questions for Carrie this morning? I think while we wait for some, some hands to go up, um, I think the worship team is going to come back and uh, close us off with a song. All right, we're going once. When, when she comes down from that stage, she's not going back up. Carrie's thinking, thank goodness. You're welcome. All right. Well, I think you'll be around for a few minutes if anybody wants to chat sure. after the service. So yes. thank you very much, Carrie.